Today we are breaking down minus 58 kilograms Zandi from Iran. Apparently he's doing really, really well. And we had a request, a special request to break down his game. So let's get into it. So for those of you guys who don't know me, my name is Chris. Uh, I have made Philippine national team. I was on Philippine national team from 2012 all the way through 2019. Uh, won three world championships. The highest world ranking I ever achieved was ranked 23 in the world. And now I coach fatherhood, but every now and then when the special request, I don't want to keep us safe on the knowledge I have. So I try and give back when I can, when I have time. Good offense. Iranian style punch, very normal. So for those of you guys who don't know what an Iranian style punch is, um, I saw Husini using this first. You can see here he's going to run in with that front leg bent. So he's setting the tone with a cut, which is hard cut, hard cut. And the way most people block that now is that with the cancel, right? And so now that he's expecting that cancel to show up, he's expecting that cancel. So keep in mind Iran is expecting that. On this one, he's expecting the leg to go up. Perfect. Leans in forward to get the punch. Oh, he's fighting Jun Jang. Jun Jang, for those of you guys who don't know, is also legendary in this space. Really good fighter. Normal front leg things. Oop. I try to capitalize. That's unfortunate. A good job of timing on Iran's part. Not so good on Jin Jang. And for those of you guys who are wondering why my screen is set up like this, I got a copyright strike once uh, for using the material if I do a full overlay, so I have to do this miniature size miniature version to, to make it happen. A lot of a lot of pressure. Nice. I'm expecting a front leg either from Korea or Iran at this point. From Korea to stop the punch and from Iran because he's setting up with that punch very, very well already. I think that was the attempt. Jin Jang has crazy left leg in the clinch and outside. Very nice. Iran's wasting no time here. I heard this guy's young. Generally, with a lot of younger fighters, they're very uh, hot. Like, they get amped. They're excited and they have this stamina to go, go, go because they're younger. Jin Jang's been fighting for a while. Let's try. Let's see a short axe kick come in soon. Nice try. Ooh, that's unfortunate. So, new Taekwondo. This is a pretty good setup. Boom, boom. Good. So he knows Iran likes to do that front leg, right? So he's trying to plan to meet him. Does the inside twist kick. New Taekwondo, that's a that's a thing now. Iran here really good at scoring and following up. Great work. So far, just a lot of forward pressure though. I'm I'm not looking specifically for techniques. I'm looking how is it set up. So a lot of the game plan, the, the base pillars for the game plan here are the hard cut, right? The Iranian style punch. Great. Oh, that, no score? He for sure moved his head on that. Boom, hard cut. The Iranian style punch. I don't know why that didn't score, but the Iranian style punch and then following up the clinch because they know they're going to meet together, correct? So here's a video replay. And what's... The reason this setup is good... I didn't I didn't pause it. This is just the video going. The reason I didn't, I didn't pause it... Uh, well, I didn't pause it, but the reason this is a good setup is because he's already establishing that forward pressure, right? This is Iran. He's establishing that forward pressure. So Jun Jang has a few options. He can either, one, slide back, which he's been doing, uh, or and lose ground. Two, stand his ground, right, where Iran is starting to punch him. Or third option is to slide in. So Iran knows that option is coming, and on one of those, he went for the head. Nice try there. Wait, Jun Jang, wait, I'm confused. Jun Jang scored? Okay. Just a lot of... A lot of gum junks. Yeah, just all gum. I wasn't watching the score in Jun Jang's part. And he's trying for that punch now. Still trying for that punch. Okay. Jun Jang trying to bring back the same same kind of game plan. Jun Jang's kind of game plan has been to fight in the clinch. He has a great left leg. Nice straight leg cut there. Ooh! That was clean. So this is great by Jun Jang also because he knows 
if if someone keeps running into you, a Mongolia also had this kind of same style game plan where Mongolia is always running in oh, high pressure, high pressure, high pressure. One of the best answers is the back kick because one, it hurts to get hit with it, but two, it's a high scoring kick. So if he had if if that had scored, which I think it should have, it's a plus four. Plus three? I think it's plus three. Oh no, plus four. It's plus four, okay. It's been a while since I played. It's been like six years. Still running in. Still maintaining the offense. What I like about this too is that Iran, even though he's ahead, isn't sitting back and waiting for Jin Jang, this world champion, high level fighter, to come get him. He's still out there trying to get points. He's still out there trying to make it happen. He just has to make sure not to not get too antsy so that way he blows the lead. I think an axe kick is coming soon. Head, head. Nope, never mind. Well, not like that. Good job by Jin Jang to get two. I don't know if they're going to refute that or not. But the game plan was high pressure. Okay, high pressure. And then that's that's like Jin Jang's secret weapon. Is as you're coming in for the clinch, that left leg out in Crescent. So it's uh, it's just the, one of his money shots. Something he can bank on all the time. Well, did the three points not go away? I think they're going to refute the three points here. Oh. Oh, oh this is, sorry. This is still video. They have a weird re replay going on. Boom. Trying to get the points. Unable to get the point. Whoop, maybe. Another video replay. Another video replay. Okay. Oh, this is for the three points on wipe because it hit it hit twice, but it's only one kick. So they're removing that. Um, that would have been really good ten seconds ago because then Jin Jing knows he's behind, but you know it is what it is. Normal defense points. Able to take one off one of the legendary fighters of the game here. How is this just second round? One is for Iran to start adding some axe kicks because Jin Jing's trying to meet him in the middle. But if not, I could also see why because Jin Jing's cancel is also really nice. Jin Jing, I think, in my opinion, should be starting to dictate the pace of this match with either cut or some footwork. So to get, regain some control because right now all the pacing is dictated by Iran here. Looks like he's opting just for that inside. There's an axe kick. He's opting for that inside twist kick. Yeah, so he's he's willing to trade Iranian punch, the the punch from Iran for his back leg, because one punch one point for the body, so uh, one point for the punch, two points for a kick to the body, so something he can he can work on, off of straight leg cut. Oh, yeah, I think he might like push his arm or something like that to prevent the punch. Smart defense. Oh, ran into it. Oh, whoa, let's run that back. Okay, great adjustment here. He knows, he knows that Korea has to come. Number one, uh, he's been on offense the whole time, and number two, Iran's been dictating the pace of the match. I mean, as a world champion, the only person I've seen comfortable. With someone else dictating the pace of the match and still winning is Inkyu Dun, who was a heavyweight from a few years ago. So this is an interesting play, knowing he's coming in, just beat him. Um, he's expecting the the reason this is also good too is because Iran this whole time has just been canceling, cancel whenever they come in with that cut kick. Iran's just been canceling. So on this one, instead of just landing for the cut, which you can see Jun Jang is is here bracing for for a cancel. Uh, once he's expecting that cancel, right? But because he doesn't cancel, he just goes straight to the head. There's like nothing. There's nothing there. He's expecting the Alexa clash. So if we watch this in slow mo, playback speed. Let's throw it at uh, 50. Watch this in slow mo. Here we go. Boom. Like he's fully expecting to to just meet his leg here, and then they're gonna clash like always. Or he's expecting Iran to do this and then punch, but he bypasses it once. And then on the follow-up, boom, second time. Very clean. And some of you guys might say, well, yeah, his defense was down, of course. At the high level, everyone's defense goes up right away. So when you're sparring with someone, especially, I would recommend for someone you don't know because if you're sparring with someone you do know and you do this, it's, it's a little bit mean. It's a little bit rude. But 
if you're playing at a high level, you want your teammates to play at a high level, this might be something you might have to do to your teammate to tell them to remember to keep your hands up even after they kicked in the face. So in this one, you got hit in the face. Jin Jang's expecting a reset. Duran knows the defense is down. Go after him again. A second, uh, second shot to the face. Excellent, excellent. Nice try, and then forces the game right away. Doesn't let him reset. So here, boom, boom. Check the score, and then he's back in right away. So Jin Jang can't uh, can't mentally recover well. Keeps him off balance. Yep, defensive cut for a little bit, and then soon another dive punch or Iranian style punch. Nice try. Jin Jang trying to come up with those body shots here. Just not scoring though. Seems like it's it seems like it's making some nice contact with the Hogu. Unable to score for some reason. When was this? Uh, I'll check the I'll check when this was posted a while ago or next time. Mm, hard medical. Someone's nose uh, hand bleeding. Now, for most people, I would say this is not, for like 90% of people, I'm going to say this switch to defense while you're 6-1 ahead of uh, a player is not good. But the reason that I'm okay with this is like, let's say you're playing someone in chess and you're used to them being super offensive every time they play. And then suddenly they're using like a really slow defense. It's like, this is a different look. How do I approach this guy's defense? How good is this guy's defense game? So these last few um, it plays here, Normally, I'd be like, no, you need to keep all offense. No, you need to keep the offense. But him switching to defense now in this last minute of this round is like a different look. Now he's trying to dictate plays again. But it was, it's something I, I grill other players for. But at this level, you know, it's not bad because if, if you're going against someone, like I said, high offense, and then all of a sudden they stop moving into offense and they look calm and collected on defense, you're like, what kind of cards does this guy have? Good. Now he's just, what Iran's doing now is he's just trying to break distance. So here in, I think his next defense is probably going to be out. My guess is out. Or maybe not. Wrong. He's trying to go for a headshot. Because he knows he has to come for it. So now he's, a lot of Iran's, if you notice a lot of this back here. Since he knows Jun Jang has to come in, a lot of this stuff is immediate to the head to try and get more touches. So 44 seconds, still a lot of time. Tried for a headshot there. I think these next couple ones, if I don't, I'm not mistaken, were for heads. Keep the defense. This is more when he's going on defense, right? Boom. These next one, he knows Jun Jang has to come. Make sure Jun Jang doesn't reach behind his head. Oh, maybe I was wrong. Some of it's just normal, normal defense, normal clashing stuff. That one, I think, was trying for the head. That one. Another one, another one for the head. That's what I was talking about. Because he knows Jun Jang has to come. So he's just throwing stuff in the space between him and Jun Jang. Because in order for Jun Jang to score, he has to move forward. So he'd run into it. This is what I talk about when I'm taking short head kicks, guys. Is short kick in the space between you and your opponent. So that way when they're sliding in, you can get him. Nice follow-ups, though. It's hard for me to judge the follow-up stuff. I mean, it's, it's a right leg in the clinch. Right leg follow-up while he's close. But it's the setup for that is is... You just crash the distance and then you kick. So I don't go into it that much just because it's like, oh, after you're done. That was so close. That was so close by Jin Jing. If that had hit, that would be five. Uh, that would be eight all. So that's a close one. Maybe not anymore. Uh, moving forward, moving forward. Yeah. That's it. Takes down the king. Next fight. Same fighters, they're meeting again, I think, maybe a different Grand Prix. So we know that, for example, Zandi likes that offense with that left hand punch. He likes that straight leg cut. He also has that right leg in the clinch. Jun Jang, calculated, really good left leg fighter. In the clinch, out of the clinch. Very good with those setups. Give him off balance, set up for the punch. No punch given. Happens. You don't extend well. 
Nice punch. Oh, wait, sorry. This isn't Jinjin. This is Park. I'm sorry. Apologize. Another good Korean. Park I haven't watched too much of, so I'm not really sure what his weapons are. But we just watched Zondi. Nice try for the headshot. <laughs> that was pretty spicy. Both of those had connected. Boom. I don't know if this came before or after the last one, but if it came uh, before or whichever whichever one, uh, if he had some information or that he's already deduced that Zandi is a very high offensive player, this is a great combo here. Boom. So he knows he's gonna try and clash. Boom, back kick is solid because that's plus four. And then spin the other way is another plus four. That's well, she could have, it could have been theoretically a plus eight here. And he had a, was waiting for his coach to have gotten the sign, but coach didn't sign it soon enough. This is the replay. This is that was a clean combination by this park kid. Good job, man. He looks young. He's an 18 year old. Survived the, the, the fight camps in Korea. Oh, we're going. Ooh, good job both sides here. Okay, okay. So he's just trying to reach. Korea's trying to reach on that cut. It ran ready for it with that counter headshot, but neither hit. So the big deduction out of that is you can't chase him too much. So Iran might try and fight him more so in place. Boom. They try and fight him more on a grounded setting versus trying to force the clinch and push him backwards because he knows he has that crazy spin stuff on top. Yeah, so right now he's going straight in place. In place where exactly for where he is and he's not pushing any further than that. Oh, uh, yep. No pursuit. Good try. Crazy clinch game by both these gentlemen. Boom, in the clinch, left, right, double, close, double. I used to do this double a lot. Um, boom, this is good on a KPNP Hogo, I heard. Korea, try to get that headshot out of there. Excellent. Boom, boom. And you notice there's also a change in demeanor now by Zondi. He's not pushing all the way through because he knows Korea can spin uh, the, way he's, the way he did the first, first exchange. So he's fighting everything exactly, just maybe just beyond where Korea's standing, but no, not too far, no, not too much for further forward. Still using those main weapons: that right, right axe kick, uh, in place; that right long leg cut; that left hand punch, left hand punch, and then that right leg in the clinch. As soon as things start getting heated, and you're both standing there exchanging. Hmm. Nice, oh, nice drive with the punch. And the follow-up in the clinch. Fast moving. Oh, yep. He knows he can't land that back kick. Or he knows he can't. Uh, I think that might have been. Oh, that might have just been force of habit for him to push there. Good job on this head kick, though. This little, this intercept, this straight leg intercept is great. It's like a, it's like a standing pike. The reason it's good is because he knows Korea has to come in. So... If you can reach it right away, I'm trying to show that replay. Ooh, barely dodged it. His foot got stuck in the armor here. This looks like what happened. Are they gonna give it though? Yeah, I give it to him. Uh, seven seconds. You have to hit a spin kick. Good try for the body. Uh, I scored another one. That's that's the game. Next round. Good fight. Straight leg cut to the face. This guy's excellent. So he's throwing the straight leg cut. So you're like, you have to fight like almost on a pike and you have to brace for it. But sometimes he lifts that up just a little bit. So if you're trying to counter exactly where his leg is countering, he's lifting that straight leg uh, cut kick, like the pike, right? And you're trying to counter it right in place. You have to move your body in a little bit. Now, if you do that and he decides to lift it a little bit, you're still moving forward. So this is a pretty sneaky little tool. Let's try high cut. The higher you can get your cut, the better your defense. Yep, that looks like contact to me. Yeah. 
Nice punch. So a lot of this game is just based off that hard cut. And when I mean like hard cut, it's... I mean like this cut by itself might win matches. Like that's how strong and hard of a cut I'm talking about. Now like, oh, I have a cut kick down. Now I can use a punch. The reason the punch and the axe kick and that little pike to the head are so effective is because the cut um, dictates so much of the match. Like if you don't back up on that cut, if you don't cancel, like that thing is strong. It's fully extended when it's hitting you. So just keep that in mind when you guys are developing your weapons. Good. There's a rally follow up. What do you do as Korea? Well, one is you can do an offensive trap maybe against this. If you can hook the leg, if you're able to hook the leg, because if he does a long leg uh, cuts, right, it's easy to it's easy to pull into a spin. Or easier to pull into a spin. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's easy. Easier to pull into a spin rather than trying to do with a bent leg cut. Korea's trying to recover mentally here. Uh, a lot of this is... Ooh, spicy return by Korea. It's really unfortunate that uh, some of these Korea back kicks are well timed, well placed. It's just slight, like old, well placed. It's well timed, and it's just a few inches below where the scoring area is. Like those are big game deciding matches or hits, and they're not scoring unfortunately. <sighs> Keeping the pressure on. Good job, Zondi. Right away. Right away. I can imagine maybe another. It's either a cut or axe coming soon. I think. Or headshot. Break the distance first. As soon as Korea looks like he's going to punch, Sandy's going to go ahead. Well, if you're fighting someone like this, something that seems like would break uh, Zandi's offense is if just taking the initial Hujin back first. Hujin back, let the match reset a little bit. Because right now, there, there isn't much break. Zandi's not letting him breathe because... He knows. <sighs> nice punch. Because he knows he's trying to recover. Or he's, he knows Korea's trying to recover it. Uh, so one of the things you could do with someone's high pressure offense is just scoot back an angle. Scoot back an angle. Avoid it for like three to five seconds to just chill. Let him tire himself out. Not tire himself out, but let him extend himself so he feels like he's missing. And then go in. I don't know. Maybe there's something wrong with the Hogus. Because that was like a... It wasn't even anything blocking this. Like, that's a, that's a clean swipe there. So, and also this guy's, this guy's already vibing. You can see in his face, he's like super, super sure about himself already. Ooh, that's what he's been looking for all match. That's unfortunate. I think some of these headshots by Korea, by his facial expressions, look like they're making contact, but we're not scoring, so a little bit unfortunate for him. Good takeaways from Zondi in this match are, number one, have a good cut. Number two, build off that cut. And it's not like a bent cut like that. It's a straight leg, like, pike kind of cut, uh, where it's almost fully extended when he hits you. He uses that, plus the come and punch. That's definitely one of his main weapons. He scored X number of shots here. After the punch is landed, he is expecting to use his right leg. He's getting his punch in, left hand punch, and then he's switching backwards in the clinch to use that left uh, to use his right leg in the clinch. Sometimes it goes to the head. Most of the time, he's shoot comfortable shooting into the body. And then, based off that ranged offense, also that long cut, he switches that to the face every now and then, as a like as a pike uh, in place, or he switches into an axe kick. So it's very, very similar actually to like Junsei Obey with more emphasis on the straight leg cut instead of just crashing in. Excellent job inside the clinch from this gentleman as well. Good job handling himself, uh, finding those openings with just mainly his right leg. Uh, very Not very many head kicks thrown, but very good at uh, hitting both the armor on the side here and in the front. So those are uh, just ironclad techniques this guy's got. As for setup, all the setup is based off that high pressure offense. So he's in your face a lot, like Jin Seo is. And he's also... Uh, high pressure offense and he builds everything off that long leg cut all of his offense has the same look so if i'm sparring against you right now like in the camera all of the leg lifts this leg lift going to this leg lift for a punch to collapse for a punch this leg lift going into the face this leg lift going to axe kick all look the same visually so it's hard for the opponent to guess is this a cut is this a long cut is this a clash for a punch it's hard for them to read so one of the things i've been trying to harp on for a lot of you guys is during your setups make your offense look very similar 
to the other ways you do offense. So it's like, oh, my offense is a fast kick with this front leg, and then sometimes my offense is a back leg with this leg, and I'll use those alternating. Those look different. So someone who's fighting you can obviously see that this looks different than this. But if you're using this, and then your other offense goes from here into a punch, and your other offense goes from here into an axe kick, they all look the same, so it's harder for them to read. So as you guys are constructing your offense, remember to try and have series of stuff that look the same and are good at distracting your opponent. Anyway, I know this was a longer one, guys. Uh, hopefully, you guys are still here. If you guys found this valuable, please like and subscribe. I'm coming out with content for the other half of my channel soon. I'm doing a lot of edits right now. But in the meantime, I hope you guys enjoy the Taekwondo. Uh, with that being said, see you guys next time.